How many emails do I need to send for my masterclass? If you're launching your business and if you have a live event coming, like a masterclass or a webinar, I'm sure you're wondering how many emails that goes into the whole launch process. Today, I wanna to share with you all the email sequences that go into a launch. Hey, I'm Karma Hunter and I'm the owner of KarmaDNA.com. I help coaches, freelancers, and online entrepreneurs get clients consistently without social media burnout so that they can scale with evergreen systems and strategies. I post weekly content about online marketing, coaching, and entrepreneurship. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to receive the latest updates on my videos. Don't forget to check out the free trainings under the description of my videos. If you're getting ready to launch your coaching program, I'm sure you know that there's so much copy that goes into a launch. Copy means all the written marketing content. This could be your posts, this could be your sales pages, your emails, everything is a copy in marketing. Of course, you could only send one email for invitation and just let it be it, but that won't bring you as many leads as it would if you were to have these email sequences planned. What is email sequence? Email sequence is a series of emails. Yes, I said email sequences. So it's not just one series of email. We are going to segment our sequences because each sequence serves a different purpose. And once you create this email sequence system, you can always use the first one that you created as a template and just rinse and repeat for every launch or every marketing campaign you may have. Let's look at the email nurture sequences because we are nurturing our audience so that we have more leads coming in and having the right expectations about our webinar or masterclass. And even after, for a higher conversion rate, we're gonna talk about the sequences that we're gonna send. Just keep in mind, these emails are not the regular weekly newsletter emails that you're sending. These emails, the, the email sequences that we're gonna talk about are solely for your launch campaign to get you the highest conversion rate. First, let's divide these email sequences into two categories, pre and post, because we are going to send emails before our live launch and we're gonna send emails after so that we can keep making sales. When we look at the pre-webinar email sequences, we see three of them. Please keep in mind that these are not the only email sequences that you may need. This is just a reasonable amount of sequences for you to get the highest conversion rate during your launch campaign. You can add some more sequences or emails or you can subtract some. Let's divide these into two categories, pre-webinar and post-webinar. Pre-webinar emails, we're gonna talk about three different sequences. First, welcome sequence. Your welcome sequence is a series of emails that you send when your prospects, when your leads sign up to your masterclass or to your free opt-in that you gave for the masterclass. I recommend you to keep this email very short to the point, just welcoming them into your newsletter and maybe your community. And some short information about what they opted in for. You can keep this in one email or you can divide it into a few. Let me explain why a few. For example, when you opt into one of my lead magnets, you get three welcome emails. First one is to invite you to my Facebook group. Second one could be another valuable training or another lead magnet. And third one, inviting them to my YouTube channel for more trainings. Now you're gonna ask me, Karma, why don't you just talk about all of this and put your links in one email and send it? Two reasons. First reason, the more URLs you have in your email, in the body of your email, the higher your spam rate is gonna go, which means that most of your emails may go into promo box or spam box. Just a quick tip, to lower the spam rate of your emails, 
just attach one URL at a time. Number two is for copywriting and marketing purposes. In each piece of copy, make sure to only talk about one thing. That's why I don't send one email and say, hey, join my Facebook group and subscribe to my YouTube channel and here are some more freebies. Because when you send so many different offers, you get your audience confused and people don't really even have that much time to read the whole email. So just one thing per email. That way, even the skimmers will know, oh, she's inviting me to the Facebook group. Versus saying, what are all these links and just Xing out. Second pre-webinar sequence is your intro. Intro sequence or your maybe relationship building sequence, you may say. This is where you introduce yourself and talk, tell about a story that your audience can relate. You can do this in multiple emails or you can just send one email. And here's the tip. If you're telling one story, divide this story into three different emails so that they will anticipate and they will wait for your email to hear the rest of the story or to read it. Third pre-webinar sequence is your reminder sequence. One of the most important sequences because people forget, especially if you're doing a live event, like a masterclass workshop, whatnot, people really forget or people don't pay as much attention to it. So send another invitation a couple of days before the event maybe as a reminder and also start sending reminders the day before, the day of, one hour before and 15 minutes before your masterclass starts. Bonus one would be when the webinar starts, sending out it started already email. The tip about the reminder sequence is to put your link to your webinar in each email because people don't want to comb through the emails and find your link. So attach your link to every email reminder about your webinar. Now that we finished the pre-webinar email sequences, we're going to talk about post-webinar email sequences. Did you know that 90% of the high ticket sales is done through follow-ups? So if you're selling a program or a course that is high ticket, then you need to make sure you're sending promo emails. Honestly, for any marketing campaign, send promo emails because that goes a long way. You're gonna start converting a lot of people who didn't really pay attention the first time also people who were on the fence. First, your promo sequence. This is where you're gonna send the replay of your masterclass, talk about what you talked about, and send them the offer again. Also make sure to send emails about the bonuses that are expiring or the discounts that are expiring. This is gonna make them have some sense of urgency to make that buying decision. Next sequence for post webinar is our objections sequence. This is where you debunk the objections and answer the frequently asked questions so that there's no more questions and there's no objections or limiting beliefs in their mind about purchasing your services or your products. Most effective things to talk about in the objection sequence are answering to frequently asked questions, um, talking about objections, debunking these objections and limiting beliefs, and uh, showing testimonials and social proof. This sequence is gonna help you convert more clients even after your webinar is over. Now that you're done with your objection sequence, you're gonna send your door closed sequence. Tip for this sequence is continuing to show them some client wins for the ones who actually purchased your program or services during the launch. And finally, offer them your launch offer one more time as the final offer. Let them know after this email, if they wanna have your services, then they will need to pay full price or get in the wait list to work with you. So these are all the sequences that go in a webinar or masterclass you can always have more, 
and make sure to keep nurturing your audience even after your launch and in between your launches. This is gonna help them retain your leads, also get them excited for your next launch. Which one of these email sequences do you need help with? Let me know in the comments.